Hello and welcome to the Boston Cardiac YouTube channel. Today we are starting a new feature of our educational channel and that's the echo quiz. This is a short segment in which we'll show you certain echo images and clips and give the clinical history of the patient that is relevant uh, to those images. Uh, they'll be very peculiar and straightforward and you'd be asked to make a diagnosis based on that history and clinical uh, images that will be shown. You'll be shown that uh, you know, segment for about 30 seconds to 40, 30 to 45 seconds, and then uh, make a diagnosis in your head. And then we'll go over, tell you what the actual diagnosis was, and then we'll go back to those images to interpret those images and why that specific diagnosis was obvious, then a short teaching segment after that. So uh, let's get started uh, with this um, uh, echo quiz. So here it is. So this is the clinical history. Uh, this is uh, the echo images of 55 year old male, which is scheduled for a valve surgery. So that's, we're not gonna tell you which valve is the problem. The patient's heart rate is 75 beats per minute. Blood pressure is 130 over 35 millimeters of mercury and oxygen saturation is 100%. To go into the images, this is the metasophageal four chamber view. This is the M mode through the tip of the anterior mitral leaflet. This is the transgastric basal short axis showing the fish mouth view of the mitral valve. And this is a three-dimensional rendition of the basal short axis, although turned around a little bit, uh, showing the anterior mitral leaflet, the LVOT, the aortic valve, and the walls of the LV. And now you're expected to make a diagnosis based on this history and these images. I'll show these images for another about 15 seconds or so. Take a good look at them. It's obvious in the history as well as the images put them together and you can make the diagnosis. So the diagnosis in this uh, specific case is severe aortic, uh, eccentric aortic regurgitation. As you can see in this specific case, this is the metasophageal long axis view here. Uh, this is the aortic insufficiency jet, which is eccentric directed anteriorly and it's kind of hugging or striking the anterior mitral leaflet. This is very obvious in this M mode through the LVOT with color flow Doppler. And you can see in this specific situation also, while this is not so obvious the, with the timing of the EKG, but this is the aortic ejection phase. And this is a holodiastolic regurgitation which fills more than the 50% of the L LVOT. Actually, it's more than that, but you don't see that as well because it's all eccentric and it is all hitting the anterior mitral leaflet and sparing the interventricular septum that is at this stage. So this is a severe eccentric aortic regurgitation. However, there's another peculiar fact to this one which we'll go over one more time. This is also known as the Austin Flint murmur, which is uh, a murmur of severe aortic insufficiency and that is produced by the aortic regurgitation jet uh, hitting the mitral leaflet leading to high frequency fluttering of the mitral leaflet. So in this one, as you can see, this is the metasophageal four chamber view. You can see the fluttering of the mitral valve in diastole, which can also be appreciated on this MO through the mitral valve. This is the diastolic phase. And you can see this uh, specific uh, uh, you know, high frequency fluttering that is very well demonstrated in this basal transgastric short axis as well, showing the anterior mitral leaflet fluttering uh, in, the, in, the, in diastole. And again, just for the sake of interest, this three dimensional rendition actually shows the same thing as is in two-dimensional image, but a little bit more elegantly. And this is the direction of this, presumably the direction of this of the, the anteriorly directed eccentric mitral regurgitation, which is coming from around here to cause this uh, eccentric uh, uh, high frequency fluttering and the diastolic aortic murmur. And this is also obvious in this uh, blood pressure, which shows uh, 130 over 35, which means of a huge pulse pressure because of pretty rapid a decline in the diastolic pressure because of severe aortic, aortic insufficiency. Now this is known as Austin Flint murmur, which is again attributed to Dr. Austin Flint, uh, who was a 19th century American physician who was actually born in Massachusetts and uh, later on went on to become uh, the uh, live in New York and was the founder of the Buffalo uh, Medical College, which is a precursor of the State University of New York and Buffalo. He was also uh, the, the president of the American Medical Association. And in 1862, while working in Buffalo as the professor of medicine, he described this diastolic murmur, which is, and which is pretty similar to the uh, murmur of uh, mitral stenosis, but can be differentiated 
on the basis of absence of an opening snap in, in, in this aortic diastolic murmur. So this is known as uh, uh, Austin Flint murmur, which is because of a harsh regurgitation murmur, which is because of the regurgitation jet striking the anterior mitral leaflet, leading to high frequency fluttering of the mitral valve, known as the Austin Flint murmur. Thank you very much and enjoy.